Broda was a very good coach. Second and one. From the 34-yard line, and they give it to James, and James with some nifty power running. Gets out of the backfield, stopped by Pisatino Isamoa, but not until he moves the chains. You know, one of the things that the Rams are going to do is they're always going to play a two deep shell corner corner safety safety and not go for the the run come and play slow play the run and not get fooled on the play action pass from the 38 yard line here's the play action pass Brandon steps up underneath and it's Wayne making the catch and Corey Ivy is there to tackle him Immediately, Reggie Wayne, a guy who sort of gets lost because you've got Harrison on one end, and Marvin has been spectacular now in his 10th year, but Reggie Wayne has really come on to provide almost a perfect bookend. You know, and that's the way most teams are, are playing the Colts now, is keeping those two deep safeties and not letting anything get behind them. You know, and if you're going to beat them with a run, go ahead and beat them with a run and a short pass. Second and six against the nickel, and that opens up the middle for James as a flag comes in for the end of the play but as they spread it out they give it to James as they do with such effectiveness very often against the extra defensive back for the moment it's a 13 yard gain and let's see about the call well on the play before they tried to get the ball deep to Marvin Harrison and that didn't go because they were playing so deep so they said if they're going to play that soft and that much off we'll just run the ball to Edwin James. There's no defensive holding on the play because it was a run play and not a pass. The result of the play is a first down. So Joe Vitt has watched his team now get back into their own territory for the first time. The ball is at the Ram 45-yard line. There's a good player as a center right there, Jeff Saturday. On that one, on that draw play, he was able to get up in the second level and get a linebacker. He can get his guy and then come off and get to that second level a lot. Play fake again to the outside goes the pass to the tight end Dallas Clark, who came all the way back. Brandon Schiller and Tino Isamoa converge on the tackle. And the man mic'd up tonight is Peyton Manning. Listen in. Hey, shake that off, all right? Shake that off. Come, come back, all right? Well, Peyton trying to work a, a little psychological magic right there because it's it's hardly 0 0. It's 17 0. I think he said that when it was 10 to nothing, but you saw him trying to get Rhodes back into the game after his fumble on the kickoff. I think he just wants to get something going offensively, you know, and not look like, oh, we're down 10 or we're down 17. It's an uphill battle at 0 0. Let's make it a flat field. Third down and four. From the 39 yard line. Manning gets it away. Caught. Wayne, first down. And then knocked down at the 33 yard line. So Wayne comes free underneath and makes the catch, and that'll be the final play of the period. And Damian Lewis got in there at the end and really put a hit on Peyton Manning. So that's the end of the quarter, and what a quarter for the big underdog, St. Louis Rams. They lead after one. It's St. Louis 17, Indianapolis nothing. And Monday Night Football resumes after this message and a word from our ABC stations. thinking of success he's only thinking of destruction but to conquer he must obliterate the hopes of his opponent and be the only man standing fight night only on espn the x games on espn athletes redefining their sport unbelievable when does athletic skill transcend the sport he's got it over the height man that was huge when does a trick become a miracle are you kidding me don't miss a special encore of x games 11 thursdays this october only on espn Back in Indianapolis, Al Michaels, John Madden, and Sam Ryan as we start the second quarter. 
Monday Night Football. Shocking first quarter as the Rams jump on the Colts, who'd allowed 29 points in five games. 17 to nothing in this town, the state capital right there. Almost out of its mind about their Colts, who've come so close for the last couple of years, have finally, at least through the first five games of the season, shown the defense to go with an offense. But tonight, a different story, at least at the outset. Here we go on first and 10 from the 31 yard line. Trying to exploit the middle with Edrin James, who carries for the seventh time. And he's tackled by Tioka Jackson. You know, we talked about the Colts and how they don't huddle. Well, watch the Rams. They're not huddling either. They're just kind of standing around. You see, they kind of stand right in their positions. Again, the linebackers and the defensive backs all have wristbands. So they just call the defense in and say, okay, defense number three. And then they all look at number three, and that's the defense they play. Second down and nine from the 30 yard line. Manning. And has that one knocked down? He went for Wayne, and the pass is knocked down by Corey Ivey, who's at an active first part of the game tonight. You know, that's what that's what they saw Seattle do to the Rams is run those crossing patterns and Wayne just ran one earlier and then that was the same thing here that they think that if they can get the corner on the other side to run off way back here on the right that they can run these crossing patterns that time they just ran with the crosser against Seattle no one ran with the crosser nobody ran with the crosser and Seattle beat them despite not having their two top wide receivers Joe Jaravicious came out of the bullpen to kill him last week in St. Louis third down and nine Manning is going deep and it's off the fingertips of Marvin Harrison a little too deep good coverage as Travis Fisher was hanging with him and Adam Archuleta came over to help and that guy's thinking right there that would have been the record yep these guys have 85 they get one more touchdown it's 86 here it is the balls in the air this is a record nope Hey, Travis Fisher, uh, Marvin Harrison did have him beat. He had a step on him, and the ball was right there. I and mean, Peyton Manning threw it where he had to throw it. Mike Vanderjat, one of the very best. This is a 48-yard attempt, and Vanderjat's kick is no good. He is the most accurate kicker in the history of the NFL. He's made nearly 88% of his attempts. That's 7 out of 8, but not here. And the Rams will have it in pretty good field position early in the second and up by 17. only thinking of success he's only thinking of destruction but to conquer he must obliterate the hopes of his opponent and be the only man standing fight night only on espn and with that you feel that mm -mm. no how about this what do you think you feel that no that's oh, so cool wild Central in Indiana ready for some football and so were the St. Louis Rams tonight in the first quarter that Colt D which had allowed only 29 points against Baltimore Jacksonville Cleveland Tennessee and San Francisco yielding 17 and after the Vander Jack miss the Rams start from the 38 yard line and the swing pass goes out to Jackson he steps out of one tackle and is out of bounds after a gain of about six they'll mark it at the 44 yard line. Yeah, we talk about one of the outstanding matches. Uh, this guy here is one of the best defensive linemen in football. And this guy here is one of the best offensive linemen. And it's gonna it's gonna be a fight all night. Lando Pace against Dwight Freeney. Freeney made the cover of Sports Illustrated this week, <laughs> which is amazing. And, and as much as the Colts through the years, we used to talk about the paucity of defensive guys who would go to the Pro Bowl Larry Triplett came across the line in fact they went through a very long period of time where only Dwayne Bickett had gone to home a little from the defensive side and now Freeney's going to probably become a regular 75 defense five yards result of the penalty will be a first down. 
That's when you're guessing the snap count. You know, John Turlick has a thing that most of the time they'll snap it on one. If they don't snap it on one, they're sure going to snap it on two, so just go. And sometimes, you know, because he's always trying to get his advantage, you know, to get that defensive line off on the ball to rush the passer. Like I said earlier, if you run, then just get the run on the way to the passer. John Turlick, the defensive line coach, talking about Dwayne Bickett. He was the only court defender to go to the Pro Bowl in a 24-year period. And now Steven Jackson will take the ball to the 45-yard line, picks up about six yards there. Jackson's already carried the ball eight times now for 52 yards. I wonder what Mike March is thinking about that. I mean, this is this is pretty good mixture here. You know that Mike March is the type of guy that he would run and run, and then when he got away from the run and started to pass, he'd never go back to the run. I'm told that March was told by his doctors to have nothing to do with the football team for a couple of weeks. Right. But, but we know, now we're not telling anything out of school here, Vint was over at his house on Friday or Saturday. So was Fairchild. Steve Fairchild, the offensive coordinator, second down and four. And that's intercepted at the 30-yard line by Cato June. And Cato June, who's run two back for touchdowns this season, is stopped at the 35-yard line. So Cato June has given Indianapolis a huge lift. Yeah, we were talking about that timing throw. You know, and he's going to... He's going to time it and he's going to throw it into that window. Uh oh, Mark Bulger's hurt. But he threw it into the window to Torrey Holt. And Cato June is in it. It June plays like Derek Brooks. You know, when you play that cover two, and then you're going to get back and you squeeze that middle. You drive the middle linebacker deep, then the weak side linebacker comes deep and he just squeezes that middle and he can react to anything going up the seam. That's exactly what Cato June does. You see, and the ball is thrown in there to Torrey Holt. The timing wasn't perfect. Cato June ends up with it. That's his fourth interception of the season, and we'll keep an eye on Bolger, who was reaching for his collarbone as he went out. You have a flag down here on the throw to James. Ooh, and Jamie Martin is the backup. Martin has been around a long time but has not played all that much over the years. He is the backup quarterback. Holding yeah. number 52 of the defense. Five yards, repeat first down. Dexter Coakley, the ex-Cowboy. Here's the hit on Mark Bulger, and you can see it wasn't after he threw. It was after the interception when he becomes a defender. And again, he just put his right shoulder down there to take on David Thornton. But once you intercept, then, then he becomes a blocker and Mark Bulger becomes a tackler. Right, he is fair game at that point. Quarterback rules don't exist. First down from the 29-yard line. Stretch play. James. And he's taken down at the 23-yard line. They're going to send Bulger to the locker room. Tino East Samoa makes the tackle. Yeah, that was the thing we were talking about, Mark Bulger. He's a tough guy. I mean, he hangs in there, takes a lot of hits, and again, that wasn't a hit where he was in the pocket. That was a hit that he took right there after an interception. Usually quarterbacks don't go over there, you know, to make the tackle. And if they do, if they're going to offer a shoulder, it's usually their left shoulder. Second down and four. James will turn it back up to the 16-yard line. And John, is there a tendency for the defender who then becomes a blocker in that situation to seek out a quarterback if he can? That used to be the old rule that, that when a quarterback throws an interception, the closest guys just go get the quarterback. But the, the NFL does protect the quarterback now if he doesn't go after the tackle. Now, if he goes to put himself in position to make a tackle, then, then he's eligible to be blocked. From the 17-yard line, Manning throws. It's Wayne making the catch, and he takes the ball inside the 10. So the Colts trying to capitalize on that Cato June interception. DeWan Gross playing with an injured hamstring makes the tackle. Bulger walking back to the Ram locker room. Here's Reggie Wayne. He's just the outside receiver. And again, once he gets inside, Peyton Manning is just waiting for him to make that little move. And once he gets inside, he just drills him with it. Second down two from the nine-yard line. I wonder if they go to Marvin Harrison here. Instead, they're going to keep it on the ground, give it to James, and he's going to lose the ball. And it was Corey Ivey, and Corey Ivey looked down. He didn't see it at 
first, but he's able to gather himself, and it's kind of like a look what I found situation. They've been running that stretch play, and Edron James has been very, very successful with it. I say Corey Ivey's in there. He's the he's the third corner. He goes in against three wide receivers. Still no signal from the officials of all of the Rams. And look at this. Austin says, uh-uh, Indy has the ball. So wishful thinking on the part of the Rams. And had Ivy turned around a tenth of a second earlier, he would have had it. I did see one of the officials say the other way. I saw him. I saw him point that way. I don't know about that one. I well, mean, that ball came out. You know, now, now he could put his hands down, and that doesn't count as being down. When that left hand goes down, that doesn't count. And how did Ivy not come away with it? You've got Ivy with two arms, and you have the right arm of and James. Indianapolis had the ball on the bottom of the foul. They had the ball after the play was unscrambled. Ooh, I don't know about oh, that. Man. Well, I don't know how you challenge that either, because there's no way, there's no replay, unless you're a golfer, that's going to have a, an angle to show you who has the ball. Well, right after that, the one official did say it was a Rams ball. And the Rams are going to take a timeout. Timeout with Indianapolis knocking on the door. Can you be a poker player and not have a nickname? They call me the Quiet Lion. Kamikaze Korea, baby. Awesome, man. Greg Raymer. I love the colorfulness, the, the different characters it creates. Crazy who's the professor of poker. Empty seat. There's like 27 Steves and 80 Pete's. It's easier to remember a nickname than it is to remember the guy's real name. It's Miami John instead of John Cernudo. Geography has always been a popular source for finding a nickname. Lamb roll or slim. Texas Dolly. Crazy Canuck. And the Flying Dutchman. Come on, give me the money, Norris! At the poker table, you may find yourself next to a master. You sit next to the master. I'm a furniture man for a living. Now I'm sitting next to you. My nickname is Mike Mouth. God shall give it, and God shall take it away. My nickname is Wookie. <laughs> we come back one thing to note you cannot challenge the recovery of a ball except in the end zone so it's not challengeable the official the umpire came in Roy Ellison and did in fact signal Rams ball here's Peyton Manning we have him mic'd up and here's what Peyton's saying during the play So as in baseball, the tie goes to the runner. Here the tie goes to the offense. And Manning throws, and that pass is caught at the half-yard line by Brandon Stokely. He is not into the end zone. It'll be second down. So Peyton Manning and the Colts get a huge break on a dual possession situation. The offense retains the football. And the reason that Peyton Manning was saying no, no, is because the umpire did signal there was a Rams ball going the other way. This is a running situation now. The, the Colts don't have a fullback, so when they put their second tight end, Ryan Fletcher in as a fullback. James is the running back. James with the ball. And James into the end zone. After he bounces off a tackler, in he goes. And so the Rams were up 17-0. Bolger throws the pick. Bolger gets hurt. The Rams can't come up with the fumble on a dual possession situation. Bolger's back in the locker room, and the Colts are back in the game. Yeah, we were talking about Edron James and maybe not as many moves as he used to make, but more power. This is power right here. Vanderjat for the point after. And so the Colts... With 9.44 to go in the half, shave it to 10. St. Louis, 17. Indianapolis, 7.
ESPN Sport Legends presents Martina Navratilova. Martina Navratilova grew up in Czechoslovakia. Thriving as a professional tennis player, she made the difficult decision to defect to the U.S. Czechoslovakia was a place that was held up in the world's eyes as being under the thumb of the USSR. Anybody who could would have wanted to leave. They were not going to let her out. Uh, they had disapproved her plans to travel and play the U.S. Open. I talked to my father and I said, you know, I think I want to stay there. And he said, I was going to tell you the same thing. But if you do, don't come back no matter what I tell you on the phone because, uh, you know, we may have a gun to our head when we talk to you on the phone. The guy said, do not tell anybody anything. Just go to your hotel room. Don't say anything to anybody. You know, this is all very secretive. It was in the Washington Post that morning. Atlanta is the site for Monday Night Football as the New York Jets go south to take on the Atlanta Falcons. Michael Vick and company in action next Monday night. Colts to kick off. Trailing now by 10. Winner's kick is taken by Chris Johnson from the nine-yard line. Johnson brings it back up to the 22. The story about Bulgers. Sam, what do you know? Well, Al, some anxious times for the Rams right now. They're calling it a bruised right shoulder. He is in the locker room, as you mentioned, for x-rays. The x-rays have not come back yet. We will update it as soon as we get the results, Al. And that means that Jamie Martin, who has been around a long time but has played very little, and here's the injury now to, to Bulger on the interception by Cato June. He got involved in the action, and Jamie Martin, who first was on a pro roster in 93 with the L.A. Rams, but has played in only 26 games total since then, and started three. From the 23-yard line, Martin will go right to work through the air and completes it. So he comes off the bench. Torrey Holt makes the catch, and for Jamie Martin, he's played in only one game since the start of the 2003 season. You know, but he's a he's a real bright guy. He's been around. He knows this offense. He's been with Mike Martz. He's been with Steve Fairchild. You know, he's been with Mark Bulger. He's practiced. He knows what they do. And and the backup quarterback has to be that type of guy, the, a guy that understands the game plan and then can come in and run it if need be, but not have a lot of reps in practice. Martin's 35. He played his college ball at Weber State in Utah. He'll give it to Stephen Jackson. Tough, tough, tough running and close to a first down. Tackled finally by Mike Doss. I tell you, I think those those key words were tough, tough, tough <laughs> running, and that's what that's what I've always liked about Stephen Jackson is is that he finishes off runs. I mean, some guys will 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 make runs and they'll just run until the the first tackler comes upon him. This guy will take that first tackler that comes upon him and knock him back where he came from. He's already gained 61 yards tonight, averaging over six yards a carry. It's second down and in inches from just shy of the 50-yard line. And Jackson gets it on a draw and he just turns it up and picks up a first down, taking the ball to the Colt 45-yard line. Monte Rager and Bob Sanders make the stop. Now you feel in this first half that the Rams are, are maybe a little bit more than the Colts expected. I think that yes. their offense is playing playing a little quicker the pace and and, and you know Steven Jackson running with power. It doesn't look like the, the Colt defense expected this from the Rams. Without their head coach, you thought, well, maybe they'll come in a little tentative. The coaching staff, new situation. Marshall Falks even been in the game and had his first touch in a couple of weeks. The ball at the 45-yard line. Martin with the fake. The throw it out to the left side. He's lucky that one wasn't picked off. That's Larry Triplett who got in the lane right there. Now that's what those defensive tackles do now. Once they see those backs try and try and sneak out of the backfield, they start to think that it's a screen. And watch Triplett says 75. He's right here, and and he sees Stephen Jackson there. So instead of continuing 
in the pass rush, he runs right down the line for the back. And, and defensive tackles in this league are getting better and better at making that move. Second down and 10. Three wide outs for the Rams. Martin. And he'll give the ball at the last moment to Steven Jackson, but that didn't fool anybody. In particular, Robert Mathis, number 98, who's a pass rush specialist, plays only a small, not a small percentage, but plays part of the time, not full time, and has six sacks this year. Yeah, but that's a tough thing when you get Mathis on one side, Dwight Freeney on the other side, and they come on a stunt. Well, you get them both together, and they cross and come on a stunt like this. This could make it very, very tough. Which way do you slide your protection? Now Marshall Fall comes in the game. Third down and 13. And the pass into traffic caught by Falk. And Marshall takes it to the 45-yard line. Back to the original line of scrimmage where they started on first down. So fourth down and 10 under seven minutes to play now in the half, and Indianapolis will get the ball back. You know, we were just talking about defensive linemen playing running backs in the passing game. That time it was Dwight Freeney that played the pass. Now, 41-year-old Brian Barker, who was in camp with the Rams to punt. Barker was out of football after camp. Reggie Hodges, a draft choice of the Rams. He had the job, but last week they let him go. They brought Barker back. Barker was sitting at home in Jacksonville, Florida. And now here he is at the age of 41, sending it down to Troy Walters at the 14-yard line, and he makes the fair catch right there. With 6.21 to play in the opening half. The Rams and Steven Jackson on top, 17-7. The X Games on ESPN. Athletes redefining their sport. Unbelievable. When does athletic skill transcend the sport? And he's got it over the height. Man, that was huge. When does a trick become a miracle? Are you kidding me? Don't miss a special encore of X Games 11. Thursdays this October, only on ESPN. Rams got off to a hot start tonight with 17 unanswered points in the first quarter. They've already picked up over 206 yards, but now with their backup quarterback in the game, it's a different story. Colts will have it. Colts are down by 10. Manning and company go to work from their own 14 yard line. Heavy workload for James thus far tonight. And that continues. And James picks up nine yards. Yeah. Isamoa knocks him out of bounds. I'm sorry, I was just thinking that they've been running the heck out of that stretch play. And what it is, is the ball is snap. Now he's going to run right to the numbers. He's going to run right to the angle, to the, to the numbers, there, and not make the decision whether he's going to bounce outside or cut back until he gets to the numbers. And they'll run that wide side, like to this side, or short side to the other side. Edrin's carried it 12 times for 64 yards. And on second and one, the pass is caught by Harrison. Marvin up to the 28-yard line. Second grab for number 88 tonight. Archuleta and Kinoe Samoa in on the stop. You know, one of the things that everyone on defense against the Colts this year has really taken away, we're talking about that play-action pass and, and the deep passes to Marvin Harrison. And sometimes I feel that Peyton Manning is, is not looking at Marvin Harrison as much as he used to. And there's still some things there. First and 10 of the 28-yard line. From the draw to the outside goes James. Nice little stiff arm there to pick up another yard or two. Brandon Schiller in on the stop. Play action last year with tremendous effectiveness. Look at that. About a third of the time, 35% of the time, they used play action. And Manning's rating, phenomenal. With 24 touchdowns, two picks. This year, they've used it only 20% of the time with much less effectiveness. That's through the first five games of the season. Second down and three from the 35-yard line. James. 
And John, is, is part of that the fact that teams don't bite as much on the play action fakes now? Yeah, it's just that cover two shell. I mean, you look at the way the Rams are playing. They're playing their two safeties about 20 yards deep. And no matter what they do, they're not going to bite. They're not, not going to be affected by it. So if you go play action pass, maybe you can get a crosser or a check down, a shut, or short type pass, but you're not going to get anything deep. Just saw Mark Bolger come back on the field, but he has that right shoulder. You know, the uniform is on and cased in ice as he comes back. Third down and one at the 37-yard line. They've already taken x-rays in the locker room. And he's going to throw. And it's going to be caught by Clark reaching up. Nice grab. He beats DeWan Gross at 5'10. Dallas Clark at 6'3. Third year out of Iowa. And that was that crossing pattern we were talking about. And again, you know, the, the Colts saw that on film. And that was something I watched in practice. And they ran every type of crossing there could be. You know, you know, we saw Nate Wayne do it. And here we see the tight end, Dallas Clark, do it. Start on the right and run to the left. And it all starts with play action. Again, to just hold those linebackers a half a beat so that you can get that tight end across. First down from the 44-yard line. Fake draw. And he hit as he throws, and that's a great catch by Clark. And then Clark appeared to lose the ball, but retains it at the 36-yard line. So Dallas Clark makes the catch as Leonard Little got in there and hit Manning as he unloaded. That's a 20-yard gain. You know, one of the things that they do with play action, too, is, and that last pass was a play action, is they try and get that middle held so that Dallas Clark can get in it, but they will pull their guard. Jake Scott pulled on that last one, so you see the guard pull and the run of the, 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 the fake of the run, that does hold the linebacker. And Clark did have it all the way. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Give it to James for the outside. Great blocking. Archuleta whiffs on the tackle. And he gets inside the 20-yard line. Tarek Glenn with a great block to spring him. Sam, what's the update on Bolger? Well, you saw him come out. The x-rays were negative, which is good news. But it is being called a sprained right shoulder. His return is doubtful, though, Al. Well, right now, he's not going to return in the first half because he doesn't have his shoulder pads on. He might have his jersey on, but no shoulder pads. He still has it iced. And Jamie Martin will be the man, at least for the half. And he's probably coming out to be the communicator because Jamie Martin was the communicator. So now Mark Bolger can be the communicator to him. From the 18-yard line now, Manning throws. That's caught by Wayne. And Wayne takes it to the three-yard line. Gross makes the tackle. And right now, the Colts on a long drive that started at their own 14-yard line. And we come to the two-minute warning. What the crowd really wants to see is not only a touchdown, but Manning to Harrison. Two minutes to the half, 17-7 Rams. Hollywood has the Academy Awards. Now poker has the Royal Flush Awards, better known as the Flushies. 2004 was the year that the highlight culture invaded poker. Raising the ante on post-hand celebrations. Greg Ramers may have been the biggest. Matthias Anderson, the loudest. There was one other performance, however, that flushies could not ignore. With entrances so grand. Reactions so spectacular. <laughs> And perhaps the best line ever spoken after getting busted. If there weren't luck involved, I guess I'd win every one. Phil Hellmuth turned in a transcendent performance in 2004, earning him the flushy for performance of the year. End of interview. Tonight, the Colts had had the lead almost the entire time. But look at this. Tonight, they've trailed for 25-04.
They were tied, of course, for the first 256 of the game. In the first five games, there is the difference. They trailed for only 13 and a half minutes. They were down 17 nothing, but now it's 17 to 7, and they have a first and goal at the three yard line. They're still in three wide receivers down here. They've been in that most of the game because the Rams have to play in the nickel or five defensive backs. Harrison split wide right. Manning throwing to the left. Touchdown, Reggie Wayne. Eighth touchdown pass of the season for...